Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. Eochon Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Monday, September 5th, 2022, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is in St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 8, verses 7 through 15. Brethren, as you excel in everything, in faith, in utterance, in knowledge, in all earnestness, and in your love for us, see that you excel in this gracious work also. I say this not as a command, but to prove by the earnestness of others that your love is also genuine. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I give my advice. It is best for you now to complete what a year ago you had not begun, not only to do, but to desire, so that your readiness in desiring it may be matched by your completing it out of what you have. For if the readiness is there, it is acceptable according to what a man has, not according to what he has not. I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened, but that is a matter of equality. Your abundance at the present time should supply their want, so that their abundance may supply your want that there may be equality. As it is written, he who gathered has, who has gathered much has nothing over, and he who gathered little has no lack. And today's gospel reading is from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 23, verses 29 through 39. The Lord said to the Jews who came to him, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the monuments of the righteous, saying, If we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have taken part with them in the shedding of the blood of the prophets. Thus you witness against yourselves that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your fathers, you serpents, you brood of vipers, how are you to escape being sentenced to hell? Therefore, I send you prophets and wise men and scribes, some whom you will kill and crucify, some you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from town to town, that upon you come all the right, may come all the righteous blood shed on the earth. From the blood of innocent Abel to the blood of Zacharias, the son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar. Truly, I say to you, all this will come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, killing the prophets and stoning those who are sent to you. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is forsaken and desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until I say, until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. So today's message is a little less pleasant than most. And it has to do with how we perceive ourselves and compare ourselves to those who have come before us. In this day and age, we mourn the fact that there are few holy ones left. And everything around us is starting to fall apart and the fabric of society is starting to unravel and we are worried and I've heard so many people say, oh, come Lord Jesus, come. But my question to you is, are you really ready for that? And I ask this question because we have these words that our Lord speaks to the people of his day the faithful people, not just the scribes and Pharisees, the hypocrites, but he's saying it to everyone who has ears to hear, that they say that they wouldn't have participated in the stonings and the murders of the prophets, but he knows better than they do exactly what they are capable of doing. Think about us in this day and in this age. Yesterday we had the reading of the rich young ruler. Well, many of us are actually richer than that poor ruler was. And by that, I mean we have surrounded ourselves with things and we have become confident in our abilities and we have become more and more able to depend on us and on our technology and less and less do we depend on God. And that's a problem. Everything that gets in the way 
of God, between us and God, is idolatrous, everything. And so when we think about who we are and how we relate to the things of this world, we need to remember that if there is something that we are putting between us and God, then indeed it is an idol. And what's going to happen is that idol will be smashed. Now, that idol could be our sense of security, some kind of security blanket. It could be Alexa. It could be something else. It could even be a country. If we begin to think that somehow our nation is capable of providing us things that really should be provided by God, then we are in trouble. Think about the bigger barns. Our Lord gives the parable about the man who has so much in terms of crops, so many things that he harvests, that his own barns are incapable of, fill, of, of holding everything that he has collected. And so instead of thinking about being grateful to God because he's not the true owner of those things, instead he says, well, I'll just build bigger barns and take care of them and then I can just be at peace and enjoy my leisure. Well, a lot of times I think we think this way about our time, that we have enough that we don't have to need God anymore. Well, when we feel that way, that's exactly when we are set up for a fall. We should not place our faith in princes and in sons of men in whom there is no salvation, to quote both the second antiphon of the OCA Divine Liturgy Service, but also the Psalms. Because when their breath departs, they return to their earth, and on that very day their plans perish. This is a very humbling, but a very important message for all of us to keep in mind. And so we hear our Lord today in the gospel, mourning over Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, killing the prophets and stoning those who are sent to you. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is forsaken and desolate. So chilling. Well, let's pray earnestly and fervently that we don't fall into that very same kind of peril, that we ourselves do not see something other than God as able to take care of our needs or our wants. Let's make sure that we are not placing faith in God, misplacing faith, what should be faith in God, with faith in country, political party, even family. God and God alone is the one to whom we should be dependent. And we need to make sure that in everything that we do, that sincerity is reflected in our actions. May God direct our steps. And may he give us wisdom to do what we can to do the right things in this day and always. And may God bless and keep you and those that you love today and always. In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Thank you very much for joining me today. I pray you have a great day and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.